Well, now, the Haudenga Health Department is refuting claims that Johannesburg's hospitals are in a critical condition. Health activists say Johannesburg's public health services are on life support and that the prognosis is poor. They say there are no signs of urgency to bring Charlotte McLeary Johannesburg Academic Hospital back online after a fire forced its closure. The claims at that uh, are also that both Helen Joseph and Rahima Musa hospitals are operating under extremely difficult conditions conditions as their water supply has been intermittent for days. Mark Hayward is editor of Citizen Maverick. Charlotte uh, McLeague will hear details about that. A visit they paid to Wangye Gambu, spokesperson to MEC Department of Infrastructure Development. A very good evening to you both and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening and thank you. Mark, let me start with you. You say the Citizen Maverick visited Charlotte McLeague yesterday. What were the findings? Well, yes, um, I visited uh, Charlotte McLeague yesterday uh, and took a walk around uh, the hospital. And what I saw was that the hospital is uh, empty. The only uh, service that has moved back into the hospital since the fire is the National Health uh, Laboratory Services. I visited the site of the fire uh, and saw where the uh, floor had collapsed uh, in the parking basement and saw no sign of construction or rebuilding there. And I spoke to a number of healthcare workers, both inside that hospital, but also healthcare workers at other hospitals, which are taking up the patients who can no longer go to that hospital and heard a lot of frustration and uh, anger, because what they say is that they do not know when Charlotte McClaycle is going to be open again, that their clinics are dispersed across the provinces, that patients are suffering, and that the hospitals that are taking their patients are suffering as well, because they are now facing both the third wave of COVID-19, and there's been a significant rise of new admissions in the last two weeks, together with severe pressure from managing the patients of the second largest hospital in the country, which is still closed. Hmm. So, Bonio, we won't talk about some of uh, the findings that uh, Mark was referring to that refer to the uh, operational hospital services per se, but you say in terms of the infrastructure, you are on top of it, and that is not true that you are not attending to the infrastructural damage. Uh, tell us why you are saying, other than what Mark is reporting, you actually are working on the development. Thank you, Tabisa, and good evening to your viewers and to Mark. We need to understand that the fire started at and happened at the storeroom, which, yes, is an essential part of the hospital, but it is not the hospital where you had patients. One, two, the work that needed to be prioritized is the work that has to do with the physical infrastructure of the hospital where you have wards and you have patients and five units that have been affected by this fire, including the oncology ward and the air duct system that would have been affected by the smoke. And that process is not one that can be rushed, considering the fact that once you have dirty or below certain standards in terms of health, type of oxygen and airflow in those wards, it will definitely affect those patients. We have done and worked tirelessly in, within the prescripts of project management, considering the fact that we also need to work on different sites that have been affected by the fire, whether possible to see with the naked eye or not. And we need to also understand that once we are ready to move to the section that is where the fire started, that will definitely be done because we have already appointed a contractor for that and the necessary checks and balances as far as insurance and other project management um, requirements mm. 
had to be fulfilled okay. for those we have done. Mark, do you accept that explanation? And I also want you to delve a little no. bit more into the other hospitals you say in this case that the floor is still collapsed but they're saying that some of these things are actually need to be attended to but i want to talk about um water infrastructure uh, to helen joseph for instance uh, there are also allegations that that is an infrastructural problem give us more detail okay well let me let me deal with charlotte mccaykay first you know, I, 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 I sympathize with what Bongiwe is saying. And of course, nobody would want a hospital to be opened without being safe. But I think that transparency and constant communication with patients and with the doctors who work in that hospital is critical. Two and a half weeks ago, Bongiwe herself issued a statement saying that they would be reopening parts of the hospital. Patients would be being moved back in. They talked about mid-May for reopening the hospital. So I think that she should say, and I know she spoke, speaks on behalf of the MEC, what date? Are we talking about July, August, or are we talking about uh, uh, a matter of a, a couple of weeks? The, the issue of the air ducts and the safety of the air ducts, again, was raised uh, uh, two weeks ago. So you have to understand that with the hospital providing life and death services, for so many people, there is a huge amount of anxiety and a legitimate expectation that there will be maximum uh, transparency. And perhaps Bongiwe might give us a date, uh, Sepiso, when, when it would be open. Now, on the other hospitals, I also uh, visited Rahima Musa uh, Hospital, uh, Mother and Child Hospital. Um, and what I saw, and I must say this, is I saw healthcare workers working incredibly hard uh, with young children, with babies in that hospital. Uh, uh, I've spoken to people at Baraguanath. Again, we cannot fault. In fact, we must honor our healthcare workers. But, but both Rahima Musa and Chris Hani Baraguanath Hospital are taking tens, hundreds of additional patients, and they are doing so in situations that are far from optimal for the provision of healthcare okay. services. So but Rahima but yeah, let me give you an opportunity to respond and, and uh, respond to what uh, Mark has said. Is it possible to give a date? But also more pointedly, uh, there is a concern about water shortages where there are situations of overcrowding within COVID-19. So there's a risk of a spread of disease and infection. So are you prioritizing as uh, the infrastructure department when there are newly refurbished uh, you know hospitals or facilities when some of these are still lagging behind with perennial problems yes we are indeed and there are teams that are working with the city of johannesburg and i have to emphasize the city of johannesburg's role in this considering the fact that they are in charge of the water supply, which is the water infrastructure one, two. They are also, I understand, according to our reports, in talks with Rand Water, which is another organization. So for me to also um, clarify that there are interdependencies between ourselves as a department, our client as the Department of Health, as well as the hospital itself in as far as the maintenance and speeding up the work that needs to be done at the hospital. We sympathize and I am I cannot sit here and say we are doing as much as we can, therefore patients must understand. We fully understand the inconvenience and the health um, implications that are happening and unfolding as a result of this. We are also ensuring that we work tirelessly, including our own HOD who has now made sure that he goes on site to see for himself, to push for things, but to also assist where there are any blockages that are happening. And as far as Rahim Musa and Helen Joseph not having water, that issue would be at, in the purview of the city of Johannesburg not of the Department of Infrastructure, oh. but because we are part of the maintenance of the, those health facilities, we are working together with our counterparts in the municipality to ensure that the water tanks are there every day to assist with the 
this crisis that is happening as far as what okay. is concerned. I do apologize. And I, I also wish... needed... Okay, very, very quickly, yes, go ahead, Bonyo. Oh, yeah, thank you. I also needed us to make sure that we understand that something as a fire gutting through a hospital as big as Mark has so emphatically explained, we cannot rush to fix things and then you find that in the end we have to undo some of that work because we try to rush in order to reopen a hospital right. as big as that, considering Point the fact that it's also in a Thank hospital. you very much. And I do apologize to you both for not being able to give you more time, but thank you very much for your time. Mark Hayward, editor, Citizen Maverick, as well as Bonyo Gambu, who is spokesperson to the MEC of the Department of Infrastructure Development.